Uh, I'd like to introduce, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our keynote speaker. I've known Joanne from the very earliest days of Kuali because Joanne uh, was a seminal player in the creation of Kuali. I say that because Joanne is from the functional side. Joanne was the chief financial officer at Cornell when she came in and she led her institution into Kuali. In some institutions, uh, the IT person sometimes does the leading. For us in Kuali, it was extremely important that a functional player uh, be shown to be the leader. And Joanne set the tone, frankly, for Kuali projects, which are legendary for saying the functional people lead in these projects, because that's the way it has to be. And Joanne stepped into that leadership role from the get-go and demonstrated how it needs to be done. I think Joanne saw the value proposition the bottom line value proposition for her institution, but she also saw the vision uh, that could be uh, Kuali. And I asked her this morning, is she basking in the sunshine of her implementation? And that grin on her face will, will tell you what's going on. Uh, Cornell has been a stellar player in a Kuali from the get-go and is now active in many, many projects uh, in, in Kuali. Uh, Joanne has written articles. Uh, she, she didn't just you know, sit in her office doing the work. She also wrote articles advocating within the, the Nakubo community, her professional community, for the governance model that has, mo that has uh, driven us uh, in, the, in the Kuali community. So without further ado, let me introduce my colleague, Joanne De Stefano. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me in the back? I didn't hear you, so I assume that's a good sign. <laughs> Welcome. It is my pleasure to see so, 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 so many of you today. I never would have imagined this many people in this short a period of time to come to talk about Kuali. We all have a common interest today and tomorrow and the rest of this week, and that is Kuali. And some of you out in the audience are experts some of you are, um, implement, have already implemented systems. Some of you are planning to implement. Some of you are here because you're curious. And some of you are here because you're skeptics. And so for today, what I want to talk about is, is this a risky business? And should we be embracing the future of community source? Community source for major administrative systems is a paradigm shift. It's a new business model. And we are all experiencing it together. We are all pioneers in this adventure. And so what I want to do is draw on my experiences of the Kuali Financial System Project Board and the Kuali Foundation Board and Cornell's implementation. So first I'm going to start with um, some more general Kuali um, opinions, and then I will share our perspective of how the Cornell Kowali implementation went for the financial system. But before I begin, you have to understand Cornell. Every school says they're unique, and every school says they're different. And Cornell really is different. We are a private school, and we have public um, colleges. For the private university, we have four undergraduate schools, three graduate and professional schools, a medical college in New York City, and a medical college in Qatar. But we're also a public university. We are the land-grant university for New York State, and we have four colleges within the land-grant. We are probably the only school in the world that has to provide financial statements in both FASB for the private part of the university and GASB for the four state colleges. We have 22,000 students, over 15,000 employees, and we have about a $3 billion a year operating budget. Given that it's 8 o'clock in the morning, and you had, I heard you had a wonderful reception last night. I um, did not partake because I was afraid I'd oversleep this morning. I want to do an interactive um, slide on what is Kuali. So this is to test your knowledge. And it's a true or false, and I want to hear from you. Is Kuali a Malaysian walk? 
correct, <laughs> is Kowali of, by, and for higher education? Very good. Is Kowali enlightened self-interest? All right, that one wasn't quite so sure, but the answer is true. <laughs> Either that or you're falling asleep already. Does Kowali control one's destiny? True. We don't have to upgrade until we're ready to. Is open source easy? <laughs> Correct. Yes, thank you. <laughs> It's free, the software, but it is still a major system implementation, and we cannot forget that. Does it take a community? Very good. Okay. Given the fact that I'm a CFO, the major portion of my job is managing risk. So instead of focusing on the benefits of the various systems, I want to talk about the risks today, because that's what I think about all the time. So we could build systems. Cornell just replaced a system that we built 40 years ago. And I can tell you that when you build, you do things quickly to meet a need. And in the short term, it helps. But in the long term, it stifles your system, and you can't make the enhancements and changes as technology and other things change. In addition, you lose um, the ability to maintain the system we, at Cornell, we currently don't have a single de uh, developer who can su could support our mainframe um, system. They either died or retired. <laughs> you can buy. Whoever would have thought 10 years ago that Oracle would buy PeopleSoft? And we were a PeopleSoft school, so we lost our vendor. Um, and you don't know what's going to happen. Vendors look for their largest market, and higher ed, unfortunately, is a very small segment of the market. So systems are developed for the largest audience, and hi so higher ed has not been um, a focus of vendors. In addition, our, our um, community is much more collaborative, which is why community source is working so well, but it also takes a very long time to make decisions. And vendors get frustrated with us when we talk for a year before we decide whether we want to buy a system or not, because that's, that's profits out the door for them. We can also collaborate, and that's what we're all here for today, is to talk about collaboration. There's risks with collaboration also. As you collaborate, you know the expertise at the other schools. And it's very tempting to say, I want Johnny from University X. And we have to try to keep our staff motivated, at, train our existing staff, but not steal other staff. Um, it's also difficult when you collaborate to meet all the requirements. Um, so collaboration requires compromise. And we don't like to compromise all the time. And so we've had to learn how to co compromise. But what we've done is we've created an ecosystem that's powering the application development. It starts with the Kuali Foundation. And the Kuali Foundation provides the coordination for new features and developments. It holds the intellectual property. And it provides these user conferences for us to get together. And it provides release packaging. There's both public and private investment. Us, our schools are all invested in Kuali uh, with our user fees. And the commercial affiliates are invested in uh, the Kuali Foundation also. Then we go to investing in the community. And one of the first investments in the community um, was Mellon Foundation. They provided $2.5 million to jumpstart the Kuali financial system. We're able to leverage our resources and new partners bring new ideas. We have helped each other through our various implementations, which I'll talk more about later. And we also are using commercial affiliates to help us with their expertise. The Kuali days I mentioned um, are a part of our ecosystem. And then the sustaining support model, which I'll talk about in more detail later. Then we go to our local needs. 
And one of the things that we're all responsible for within our local institutions is to make sure that our basic needs are met. And we do that by providing the collaboration and vision back to the ecosystem and require or capture the requirements that we need at our own institutions. And if the system doesn't provide it and we develop our solutions ourselves, we contribute back to the consortium. And then eventually the community is involved. And the best part is when we start growing, adding more schools, adding more successes, we share the accountability of the success. We all have our enlightened self-interest to make this successful, but we're sharing in the risk. We're identifying best practices amongst ourselves, and we are all in this together. And together, all these open standards allow the ideas to come faster and the development happens easier. So sharing our knowledge and our ideas expands our capabilities beyond anything I think we dream dreamt of five years ago when we first started Kowali. And so I'm convinced that we have to found our ecosystem for Kowali. But how did we get here? Most of us have ERP systems. And as I mentioned, they're built for large, by large firms for corporate America. That's where they get their return on the dollar. That's the only place that the shareholders would accept their investments. Those systems were modified for higher education. Corporations don't have fund accounting. They don't have multiple year grant accounting. They don't have effort allocation. They don't have endowments. They don't have gift accounting. So these systems required extensive modifications with significant post-implementation costs. And as I mentioned, vendor consolidation was probably a risk we didn't imagine, but it is a risk. So at Cornell, when we were thinking of how to get to Cornell, how to bring Kuali to Cornell, we had to deal with the, four, the three C's of Cornell. Cornellians with their own culture, conservatives, and capitalists. It was very difficult to explain to our trustees that we wanted to share our ideas to develop software and to give it to a foundation and not collect a license fee and have some income for the university. And unfortunately, our board of trustees need to approve our administrative systems. So how can a CFO get board endorsement and support. Now well, let me see if I can do this. Oh. They used to say if a man could fly, he'd have wings. But he did fly. He discovered he had to. Do you wish that the first Apollo mission hadn't reached the moon, or that we hadn't gone on to Mars and then to the nearest star? That's like saying you wish that you still operated with scalpels and sewed your patients up with catgut like your great, 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 great grandfather used to. I'm in command. I could order this. But I'm not. Because Dr. McCoy is right in pointing out the enormous danger potential in any contact with life and intelligence as fantastically advanced as this. But I must point out that the possibilities, the potential for knowledge and advancement is equally great. Risk. Risk is our business. That's what the starship is all about. That's why we're aboard her. may descend without prejudice. Do I hear a negative vote?
and the rest is history. <laughs> but one of the things, seriously, one of the things that we did have to explain to our trustees is the difference between open source and community source. When you think about open source, you think of these geeky techies who work day and night creating an app for whatever it is they, that's of their interest, no stakeholders, and if somebody likes it, it's great. If not, they, they are happy, they did what they like to do. Where community source still takes the same principles of open source, but it relies more on defined roles and responsibilities. And it ha we have specific responsibilities and funded commitments through our stakeholders. And stakeholders are identified early on. Kuali has a strong governance with explicit roles and responsibilities. It, we have real project stakeholders that are identified at the beginning of each initiative and each new project as we begin. Then our, other, then our trustees ask, well, doesn't Kuali allow for capitalism? And our answer was, it does. Koali has 10 commercial affiliates. Cornell is using a couple of them right now. And we've gone back to our commercial affiliates several times. We see, they see the potential. It's a new business for them, a new paradigm. But they've worked with the open source. They have found their business. And today is a reflection. We have 20 vendors here, 10 of whom are already commercial affiliates. So there's another 10 vendors out there in the audience somewhere that are looking at the potential of finding a way to join our ecosystem. Can you imagine Las Vegas, February 2013, fifth annual users conference, 150 institutions. Is this a pipe dream or a probable forecast of the future? This was written by Indiana's former, former Kathleen McNeely and Cornell's former Mary Wheeler in February 2006. Where are we today? A hundred or 815 people, 157 institutions and commercial affiliates total here today. We're 15 months ahead of schedule. <laughs> Kathleen and Mary are better prognosticators than Harold Camping, who keeps um, projecting when the world will end. <laughs> I'm going to send Mary and Kathleen to go talk to Harold. <laughs> Can you imagine, though, five years ago, projecting where we would be and almost being spot on? So what have been the successes for um, Kuali? I feel the first one has been our governance structure. It begins with subject matter experts. And these subject matter experts form the functional council. The functional council's role is to review all of the detailed design of each of the systems. And they're the ones that make all the scope decisions, as Barry mentioned earlier. It's the functional people, not the technical people, that decide what the system's going to be. Then there's a project board over each functional council. And the role of the project board is to make decisions when the functional council cannot come to a conclusion. My time on the, the Kuali Financial um, System Board, there rarely were times that the decisions had to come up to the board. So why? These, this group does know how to collaborate. It has given our staff opportunity to share ideas, to identify best practices, and find new and different ways of doing things. We have the discipline in how we make decisions, and issues are discussed and votes are cast. And again, if a decision can't be made, it would go to the project board. It fosters a way of thinking for the good of the industry, not just our individual institutions. And it encourages you to question your own institution's practices. It establishes trust and respect and creates a very effective network of peers. In this bullet, I changed. My staff put that it's great food and a lot of martinis. I translated that to ensures bonding of colleagues. <laughs> I didn't think it was appropriate in a keynote to talk about martinis. So we must all hang together, or assuredly, we shall all hang separately. 
Benjamin Franklin said at the signing of the Declaration of Independence. We talk about total cost of ownership. There was a 2004 ECAR study that said 80% of your ERP costs are after implementation. We believe that Kowali, because the project begins in higher education and is directly managed by the investors who will be using the system, that there's going to be an overall lower cost of ownership. It's designed by us. Um, we hopefully have a lower cost of um, integration into our existing systems because the code is open. And we can unbundle support costs from the software. Our costs are shared, our risks are shared, and we can control our own upgrades and timing. The support model, this is very important for a lasting ecosystem. So what I'm going to talk about is the Kowali financial system because that's what I'm most familiar with. And today we have 11 schools contributing to the ongoing support model. We all have our enlightened self-interest with $1.3 million being attributed to our ongoing support on an annual basis from these 11 schools. And at this point, we're not doing new development. We're, doing, we're putting the money toward, most of the money towards new releases and enhancements. And any contributions these schools develop go back to the consortium. And again, the same theme. We have shared accountability. And the growth will provide new partners, new ideas, and new successes. It's our ecosystem at its best. Gartner did a study in September of 2010 evaluating Kowali financial system to see if it is viable um, compared to other ERP systems. And three of their findings were they support this as a viable option because they see the strong vision for evolving KFS. They, they see the highly collaborative community that we have. And they, they also expect the ongoing costs over time to be lower than an ERP system. Cornell kicked off a Kowali Days in January, and to do so, we had Brad Wheeler and Troy Fluharty from Colorado State be our guest speakers. This was six months before we went live, and uh-oh, hang on one second, so we can hear what, there we go. And we did it. On July 1st, 2009, we were up and live, and when we say we did it on July 1st, it was not just CSU. We have to acknowledge that it was the rest of the community. In fact, our last three weeks before our, our July 1st implementation date, we were fortunate enough to have three different people from three different partner schools come in each of those last three weeks to help us over the curve. Without that, we wouldn't have uh, been able to make it. And I don't know, again, like uh, Brad said, with some of the support from the commercial entities out there uh, on commercial systems, if you would have had that kind of support from the actual programmers who wrote the system to be able to come in and help us troubleshoot in an incredible manner. It was just an awesome sight to see. Very quick fixes. We were very uh, happy to see that we could get turnaround. We sent out an email. 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night, people were getting, uh, and Hawaii would get, uh, University of Hawaii would get these before they went home. Folks here in Cornell and over at Indiana would get them before we came in in the mornings, and by the time we came in the next morning, we usually had a, either a total solution or a good idea on the direction to go to solve our problems. Again, it's a, a community effort, and that's the most power of this whole system. Thank you, Troy. And we did it. On July 1st, 2009, <laughs> Sorry, we were up. <laughs> OK, but we're not, a, we're not done yet. Uh, we still have a, a long way to go. And one of the first things we have to do is understand what our role is. We are not vendors, and we shouldn't be vendors. But then how do we talk to other schools who are thinking about implementing Kowali when the questions they ask are RFP-like? How do we respond? And how much effort do we expend in the implementation of others 
Troy mentioned that he called all of the partner schools to come help when he implemented. Cornell did the same thing. As more and more schools implement, are we going to have the resources to be able to do this? We feel one of our advantages is we don't have signed contract, contractual obligations. We use MOUs. That's nice. It gives us flexibility. Over time, will we be able to maintain our support with MOUs? Will future users join the foundation? And will they provide the resources back to enhance the system, either directly or to contribute um, um, to, back to the uh, consortium? These are all questions for the Kuali Foundation. I was on the foundation um, board from its inception until two years ago. And the board thinks about the sustainable future. They have a very, very important role in our ecosystem. That's why when I drew the diagram, we started with the, the Kuali Foundation. My recommendation to all of you is to participate in Kuali. Nominate someone to the board who can vote for it or that who can speak on your behalf and vote for the board members because this is our future. The decisions they make will be how Kowali survives going forward. Given today's attendance, I have no doubt that we will answer all these questions and maintain the systems and grow our ecosystem. I'm going to transition now to Cornell and talk about our system implementation. And again, this is the Kuali financial system. Currently at Cornell, our administrative system profile is we were a PeopleSoft school, and the original plan was to implement all PeopleSoft systems. We had a homegrown financial system, and we still have a homegrown research administration system. We are part of the Kuali COIUS. Uh, we're working on implementing uh, Kronos timekeeping. Uh, we have both some Kronos implemented and a homegrown system that we're trying to replace. We're already moving our HR payroll, PeopleSoft system, and we're moving that to Workday. The drivers for action for us on the financial system, as I mentioned, are legacy systems 40 years old, and we had no support left. The system was not dependable. We had so many functions embedded in the general ledger system that we couldn't depend on what came out. The Mellon Foundation, the president of the Mellon Foundation, also contacted the president of Cornell University. He knew how unique we were and asked not for us to participate in Kowali, but to evaluate Kowali as the Mellon Foundation was considering investing in Kowali. We told our president that we would consider looking at Kowali, but if we did the evaluation, we needed to be able to have the ability to request to implement Kowali, and he agreed. Then comes the financial crisis in 2008. We were already now a, a Kowali partner, but we did not have funding to implement a system. Cornell lost $2 billion in the um, fiscal year 2009, where the financial crisis started in the fall of 2008. Our board of trustees asked an awful lot of questions, and we spent nights and weekends creating reports for about a six-month period. And the trustees said, this is enough. You need to fund your system, and you need to start your implementation. So our project goals, just like everyone else's, are to implement a 21st century financial system, to provide a business intelligence solution that meets the needs and we can answer questions when our board asks us or our president or other senior management. Everyone wants to improve efficiencies and environment. We want to reduce our risk. We need to develop our technical expertise to the new generation of uh, systems and we needed to implement on time and under budget. So around August of 2004 was when the Kuali project was formally announced. And in December of 2004, that's when our president authorized the partnership participation. February 2005 was my personal very first meeting attending the Kuali um, Financial System Project Board in, in um, Denver. 
the, the very next month, Cornell signed a letter of intent to formally be a partner. And then a year later, the institution agreed in principle to implement Kowali, but we did not have the funding. June 2009, after our trustees said, you better get a system in immediately, funding was approved. And then this past July, we went live. So our implementation was July 1st. We invited an, uh, an administrator from our veterinary school to the offices where Kowali was, um, where the Kowali development took place. She brought either her iPad or her Mac and she processed the very first transaction. And then we celebrated. We had confetti, we had donuts, we had cider, we had coffee. And Ted Dodds, our CIO, and myself were there to cheer everyone on. Ezra Cornell is our founder. And what he said was, I would found an institution where any person can find instruction in any study. The motto is still valid today, but that motto builds inherent complexities into our systems. So what have we learned as a result of implementing Kowali? We did not take advantage of the partnership and the commercial affiliates soon enough. When we did, we, they provided very quick action and gave us very sound recommendations. I think we waited about six weeks after we implemented before we went out to our um, commercial affiliates. We should have listened to Troy and done it immediately. Um, so my recommendation to all of you is to reach out at all levels early and often as you go to implement because people have gone through your problems and they can help you and it'll save you a significant amount of time. You always need more communication. No matter how well we thought we were communicating, we always missed someone or some topic or we didn't have the right tone or the right message and just always pay attention and, and whenever you think you have enough, add more. You also need to evaluate your capacity for change. Our financial system was a huge undertaking at our campus. Because we had so much functionality embedded in our old system, and we didn't replace all of that old functionality, we underestimated the change on the impacts of the pieces of our um, activities that weren't initially part of KFS. And as, as we are all the pioneers and the early adopters, there were a few components of um, RICE, for example, that we implemented that no other school had. And when you understand that you're the first and you're the, the earliest adopter, there's additional risks. And you have to evaluate those risks and understand those risks. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. You just need to, to know what your risks are. And the aftershocks last longer than expected. We thought we would be fully stabilized by now. We're not, we're on our way, and we're fully optimistic that we'll get there. But our decentralized culture complicates um, our implementations. If we go back to Ezra's, I would found an institution where any person can find instruction in any study. We need to add, but not the way everyone wants it. And we tried. <laughs> But the community source era at Cornell has arrived and with the benefit of our shared investment, our shared risk taking, and shared experiences, we will steadily get back to health and mature our system. So if I had any advice for all of you, I'd, I'd sum it up in three places. Number one, get involved in the community sooner. I've already said that. The other thing is the systems are very flexible. That's a wonderful thing. But because of our such decentralized university, we put too much flexibility into the system. And by allowing so much flexibility, we actually, in some cases, did not become more efficient. We became more inefficient. We're now going back and we're gonna take a look at all of our processes and, and clean up where we actually made ourselves more inefficient. And then finally, take advantage of the knowledge of our partnerships and the commercial affiliates. 
um, they're the ones that are going to help you out in the end. They're the ones who've already been through what you're about to go through. So in closing, is it a risky business? Should we be embracing the future? As soon as we went live with Kowali, Inside Higher Edge, Higher Education called me. First question they asked is, is Kowali career limiting for a CFO? <laughs> I'm like, okay, what do you know that I don't know? <laughs> But in reality, any time we embrace the future, it's risky business, but it's even riskier not moving forward. And we at Cornell, we were stuck with a system that was 40 plus years old and we could never move forward. So yes, it's been difficult for these past couple of months, but, the, 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 but we can see the future and we can see the end and we believe long term we're going to be in much better shape. Time will provide the total cost of ownership. We still believe that overall the shared, um, the shared resources is the way to go to minimize our investment in these systems. And of course, I believe the model will work. It does, IT takes a community, and our success and failure is based on our collective actions. I want to take a quote from Brad Wheeler when he was at our January Kuali days before we implemented. And what Brad said was, while systems developed by consensus may seem risky, the practice is in higher education's DNA. What better way for higher education administration to build a cumulative tradition of working with each other just as our scholars and faculty have done with teaching and research for millennia? We are aligning the administrative work of the universities to the core values of higher education, and this is not crazy after all. Do you remember saying that? <laughs> so my last comment is the future will provide our answers, but I think we've got, we're on a path to a great future. Um, thank you. And if anyone has any questions, it's a large group, I'd just ask you to either come up or shout out, and I'm happy to take any questions. And I can't see, so you have to, okay. Thank you.